Israeli firefighters work to extinguish a blaze in northern Israel Sunday after rockets were launched from Lebanon. Israeli police officers were seen next to the site of a fire directing traffic, after an attack in the area near the town of Rosh Pina in northern Israel. The Israeli army updated Sunday that, approximately 160 projectiles that were fired by Hezbollah crossed into Israel. Hezbollah began firing rockets into Israel a day after Hamas' October 7 attack. After nearly a year of tit-for-tat fighting with Hezbollah, Israel launched its ground invasion into southern Lebanon on October 1, 2024, and has since sent thousands of troops into the rugged terrain. Israel's war against Hezbollah, the Iran-backed militant group, stretches far inside Lebanon, and its airstrikes in recent weeks have killed more than 1,700 people about a quarter of them women and children, according to local health authorities. Some of the more than 50 Israelis killed by Hezbollah over the past year were hit by anti-tank missiles. Israel's military carried out at least two airstrikes on the southern suburbs of Beirut shortly after a military spokesman warned people to evacuate the area. The Saturday afternoon airstrike shook parts of the area known as Dahia and caused a thick smoke of dust. The strikes came after a brief lull in airstrikes on the heavily populated area that is home to offices of Lebanon's Hezbollah group. The strikes came hours after the Israeli government said a drone targeted the prime minister's house, though there were no casualties. Hezbollah did not claim responsibility for the drone attack on Benjamin Netanyahu's house but issued several statements saying it carried out several rocket attacks on northern and central Israel. The 10,000-strong group of soldiers that North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un gifted to his Russian friend Vladimir Putin will never return home. The two leaders have prepared a terrible death for them. Russian blogger and military observer Michael Naki writes about this in his blog. 
He was interested in an article by the British publication Sky News about the transfer of North Korean soldiers to the Russian Federation, which said that the commanders of the Russian armed forces would have language problems with the newly arrived unit and also that the group would not want to return back to the North Korea. Naki sharply criticized the article, expressing the opinion that the authors do not understand the realities of the war that Russia is waging against Ukraine. They are there in a tank. North Koreans will be used in the same way as prisoners, as cannon fodder to get from point A to point B. Whoever is lucky enough to survive, they will send the next group to gradually accumulate and so on in a circle. In order to communicate, they do not need to know the language. They only need an index finger to show in which direction the meat should crawl. That's all. And yes, such tactics do not provide for the presence of survivors and a subsequent return to North Korea. This is a one-way road the blogger wrote. It should be noted that according to the head of the Ukrainian military intelligence Kirill Budanov, about 11,000 North Korean servicemen have already arrived in the Russian Federation, of which almost 3,000 are already heading to the Kursk region. The GUR assumes that these soldiers will soon be thrown into the offensive. Colonel Ants Kiviselg, head of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center, believes that the participation of the North Korean military in the war against Ukraine will not change the situation at the front. According to Kiviselg, Russia's involvement of DPRK troops in the war in Ukraine demonstrates Moscow's problems in maintaining intense hostilities. Public reports say that the number of North Korean units can reach 10,000 soldiers and are currently located in the eastern military district of the Russian Federation. There are also reports of the creation of a unit of about 3,000 people on the basis of an airborne assault brigade manned by North Koreans, which is likely to operate in the Kursk or Bryansk regions in the future, he recalled. The head of the Estonian intelligence said that sending 3,000 to 10,000 North Korean troops to the Ukrainian front will not bring any significant changes on the battlefield. However, if it continues for a longer period of time, it could play a significant role in future battles, Kiviselg added.